What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and it's time for a little DIY. This thing. This weird little DIY Dollar Tree spinner blew up. I expected maybe a thousand views if I was lucky, and instead I have pulled in nearly 90,000 views in the week it's been up, and I'm averaging 100 new subscribers per day. I'm guessing you folks like it and want to see more, so that makes me really happy that I've ordered a proper pack of 608 bearings, and I've been putting them to good use. Today's project is probably going to be one of the most complicated I'm going to be doing on this channel for a while, using skills that I have honed over years, so don't be upset if you can't follow along at home. Heck, some people that use the techniques I use here go a different direction than I did, so it's even a weirder subset of what I'm going to be showing you. Who knows though, you might pick up a new hobby out of it, even if you can't follow along just yet. So this one right here was inspired by a few different trends that I've been seeing in spinner videos these days. If I look down the sidebar, probably of even this video, I'm going to see a lot of the quote unquote most dangerous spinner ever videos where people are putting thumbtacks, nails, and even razor blades on their spinner, trying to make them more dangerous for the views. And I decided to go the opposite direction. So instead of the most dangerous spinner with blades and everything, I decided to go for the safest spinner that's armored. That's right, I have coated my spinner in micro chainmail. And if you have no idea what chainmail is, it's a form of armor, surprise, surprise, that's been around, oh goodness, for a couple millennia now. There are examples from digs dating back to the 4th century BCE, or BC, whichever way you want to say it. And I've just loved the stuff. I've been working with it for a couple decades now, and instead of going the make a suit of armor method, I've gone the make jewelry route. As you can tell, this isn't even the smallest scale that I work with, but I'm going to show you a little bit of how I did it. If you want to see more detail as to how I make my links, you might want to check out the video I made about the DIY chainmail YouTube play button that I made for coming close to a thousand subscribers. I made it at 900 because I didn't know when I was going to hit a thousand. Turns out a week after I posted my first fidget toy review. So I guess there's nothing left to do but fade into the next part. Now while I like the high silver look of the aluminum spinner, I want to make something a little bit fancier for you folks. And to do so, I'm going to use two different colors of wire, specifically the black and light green 20 gauge enameled copper wire. I'm going to then wrap this around a 1 8 of an inch dowel using a power drill, yielding these coils right here. I will then cut these coils using a rotary tool with a diamond cutting bit to make links. Can you tell I've prepped for this project? If you want to see more about that process, I suggest checking out my DIY chainmail play button video, which I have previously linked in this video, and I'll go ahead and post a link to it in the description down below. So I have done all of this in preparation. Let me just go ahead and spread that out. Beyond just the wire, you are obviously going to need a bearing, some one millimeter cotton fiber cord, some super glue to be used with the cord later, a couple pieces of whatever you can get your hands on really to make some forms just to add a bit of rigidity to our wings here. In my case, I am using some leftover vinyl tile bits from when I refinished the floor in my house. And to put everything together, you will need a couple pairs of jeweler's pliers. I say jeweler's pliers because you do not want any teeth in there so that you don't mar your links. Okay, let's fade into the next part so that I don't flub up too many lines and get this started. 
To get this process started, you're going to need to make two nearly identical sheets of European 4-in-1 chain mail. Why is it called 4-in-1? Because if I can get the autofocus to behave, you have four links in one link. If you want to know more about getting it started and continuing onward, I go into a little bit more detail in the DIY play button video. But for now, I'm going to fast forward through the very tedious part of making one of the sheets. And there we go. I went for 11 horizontal rows with the six on the left pointing downward and the black on the outside. I point that out because we're going to now make one that is the mirror image. It's going to actually have five on the black side pointing downward and it's meant to just pair into that side. So I'll be right back when I have that done. And I've finished up the companion to our first piece. Also, I have taken said first piece and added an additional vertical row. This is so things are a little bit easier to stitch together at this stage. But of course, things are about to get tricky because I'm not going to be using European four and one at this point. I'm gonna be using European six and one. That's gonna let things fan out a little bit and results in a shape like this. I decided I don't want to weave that portion on camera because I made a few mistakes in the last attempt and I'd rather not do it at a more delicate stage. It's much easier to tear back four and one than it is six and one, especially mid piece. So I'm going to end up with four of these in two different variations. I need two with six links pointing downward on the left hand side and I need two with five links pointing downward on the left hand side. And that is determined by which end of this I stitch together first. If I start at the top, on this side, I end up with six on the left. But if I start down here, I end up with five on the left. For this piece, I need to do one with five on the left, and I will be right back when I am done. And there we go. I went ahead and did the next step, which is to stack two of the pieces on top of each other and weave their edges together, mainly because it's not exactly easy to show on camera with this piece. However, I can show you on this piece what I did. Let's see if we can just bring this up and into focus. There we go. I used a weave called the inverted round. So I set it up so that you take one of the pieces with six on one side and six on the other, flip them together, and they have the same number of links pointing towards each other. You run a link down the middle like that, and there you go, you have a little pocket. Into this pocket, you're going to place your piece of plastic or whatever you're using to make this stable that you prepared earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and move on to the next stage. All right, the time has come to stitch our strengthening material inside of the chain mail using our cotton cord. One trick that I like to use to make this easier is I soak the tip in super glue and cut it to a point using a set of snips like these. And that effectively creates a small needle that I can use to just stitch everything together. Let's go ahead and get everything up. It's a very simple stitch. Just bring it through one set of links. Let's see if I can't get this on camera. I wanna give myself a decent amount of cord. I just don't wanna run out during this and tear it all back and have to start again. Then we take it to the next pair of links. Let's just put it under like that. Here's hoping the lighting's working because I can't see for bupkis in my viewfinder. Bring it on through. Don't tug all the way. Go back to the original set of links you started with and under. There we go. Tighten there. And just make sure everything slides together. Repeat ad infinitum. We're just going to go all the way down this by doing a little bit of leapfrog. Go forward two, back one. There we go. 
go. That way we have a nice tight lock. And I will be back after I'm done with this. And there we go. I've stitched both sides and what you'll want to do is leave a little bit of excess on both ends of the back side that'll be facing the bearing. To seal this off, I added a little bit of super glue to the ends and once that hardened, I actually coated the whole thing in super glue. It soaks into the cotton fibers quite well and makes it a nice hard acrylic, but move slowly when doing that part because Super glue and cotton have a wee bit of a chemical reaction that can cause smoke and potentially fire in the right quantities. So be very, very careful at that step. Move slowly. I did have a few smoke ups. Now, the reason we left the additional strands is we're going to basically hook them together. But it's not gonna be that simple, of course. I've prepped the ends of all of the cord in order to make it so that it works just like the needle that I showed you earlier. There we go. And you're just going to hook it through the end loop on each side. I'll be back when I do that. And there we go. I have everything cinched up, so I just need to finish it off with a snake knot, which is this guy right here. It gives you the effect of a rattlesnake tail, hence the name. It's just a simple over-under weave. I've already gotten it started over here. It seriously is just under, like so, and back again. And as you knock all of the parts back towards each other, that's how you build up the knot. So I'm going to finish this up, and I'll be right back. All right, there we go. I went ahead and soaked the edges in super glue just like everywhere else, and it's nice and rigid. That'll give me enough strength to hold in my bearing. Let's just go ahead and get it wedged in there. A couple of spins just to test the balance. A little off. All right, and there we go. That is how you make a chainmail fidget spinner. Oh, it's still a little off balance though. It's just. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like. If you dislike this video, feel free to leave a dislike. If you have any suggestions for future DIY fidget spinners or other DIY projects, or you just want to say hello, leave a comment. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, until next time, this is your Guy Cly, signing off.